This piece I'm gonna play for is called the banjo. And it's 150 years old, believe it or not. From New Orleans by the name of Louis Morrow Gottschalk. So you see, even 150 years ago, they knew something about music. Now you may wonder, what's it like to go all over and play concerts? In some ways, it's great fun. You get to meet a whole lot of people, and really that some of the most fun experiences have been with young people such as yourselves. I always learn a lot. Now, the piano is not like the clarinet or the trumpet or the violin where you take it with you. You get to play your own instrument. With the piano, you obviously are at the mercy of whatever instrument happens to be on location. Now, these instruments vary from absolutely beautiful to barely even in working condition. And yet nobody cares, they're not interested in excuses, they want to have a concert. My question to you is, if you play any other instrument besides the piano? I first started on the violin when I was eight years old. The violin turned out to be too difficult for me. I, I just didn't have any talent for the violin. And so I decided one day to try the piano. It was a little bit easier. And so I uh, decided to stick with it. But also when I was in high school, the high school orchestra conducted needed a bass player and asked me if I'd be willing to take the instrument home, figure out how to play it, and play in the orchestra. And I did that, it was really a lot of fun. But I haven't played a bass in, well, you, you don't want to know how many years. Yeah, maybe, maybe we should uh, have our conductor, Ken Raskin, join the discussion. All right, don't go anywhere. Oh, I'm not going anywhere. All right. <laughs> People think of classical music, as he was talking about at the beginning, usually the first thing you think of is, oh, it's that old music. It's that stuff from a long time ago that we don't understand. Well, it's true. People were, well, people have been making music, from, I don't know, probably back since the time of cavemen, right? When it was very, very simple, just rhythmic things. And we all, as humans, respond to rhythm. But then as time went on, music got a little more complex and certainly the music for an orchestra even though a long time ago orchestras were smaller than they are today but we're quite often playing music that's uh, over 300 years old musicians back then you know were inspired um, you know, by their emotions or their feelings, just like artists of all kinds to paint or do whatever, to express themselves through this wonderful medium called music. What's this called? The baton. The only thing this is for is a visual, especially in a large group. It's an extension of your hand so you can see motion. That's really the only reason we use it. Some conductors don't choose to use to use a baton. But since we have a delay, sometimes I'll use happy birthday and sing just as an example, but because we can't all participate, I'm gonna ask Michael here to be my orchestra. We have not rehearsed this. I know nothing about, about uh, how he plays happy birthday or whatever. And he has no idea. We haven't talked about it. We haven't discussed any aspect of this song. Right? That's right, that he's going to play. So I could say to him, I go, oh, all right, Michael, see, this is what we're going to do. We're going to go about 60 miles an hour at the beginning. <laughs> yeah. And let's start real, real softly. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to kind of speed up a little bit to about 75 miles an hour. And then you're going to get a little bit louder. But then I'm going to stop for a second. And then we're going to go on. And I could give him all <laughs> these directions. Oh, I'll forget most of that anyway while I'm playing. <laughs> pretty much. Pretty much. So indeed. What I have to do is we have to communicate. And again, the group of three people, you were talking about how to begin the, we were talking about how to begin the piece, but there's all these different aspects that we have to communicate. And an orchestra ha will look to a conductor as well as listen and feel together because we're making music together. But he, he and I are going to interact here He's going to see what I'm doing and respond and hopefully get the right message that I am giving him about singing, about playing happy birthday. So first of all, I need to kind of give, I could go a one, a two, a one, two, three, happy birthday to you. Yeah, well. do that. 
And of course, you know rock bands are like a one, two, three, four, and you go and you and you set a tempo. We don't do that that much in orchestras. It's just kind of not what we want to do. But I can do different things. I could just go. So, how did you know what tempo we were going? Well, I got it from the way you gave the preparatory beat. I he gave think. a silent beat before I started. So there is a relationship to my body movement to the speed. It's easy. I can tap on the piano. But I'm just moving my arms to the same beat. I could just kind of mm -hmm. just do this, right? Sure. Try it again. See how he's on every beat. Look what I'm doing. Thank you. Thank you. Now, how about a different tempo? wise guy. <laughs> so that's a tempo. But you know, once I set that tempo, like do a march, you know, dee, da, 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 ba, ba, stars and stripes forever. Yeah, well, once I'm you start that you piece, I, you know, I'm going to have No, I can play it. No, no, no. Oh. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> He doesn't need me there. But what if I want to mess with the tempo? And I want to mess with the tempo. All right. So. It can be challenging um, for having to speak very complex things. Maybe it's to one musician or something. Sometimes it can help with an interpreter. But um, what is really amazing, and this is to the big question about how about this, that music is so universal, in that you can you can go and you know, you're playing this wonderful music by Tchaikovsky or Mozart and with people you don't speak to and and. I communicate the way I communicated with Michael and all of you doing happy birthday, you know, so it's a, you can do so much and also there are terms in music that, that are common, especially uh, uh, music with Italian terms, so you can, you can find that common ground in language, but a, again, there's a, there's a communication thing that even just visually and through musical terms, you can, you can pretty much, uh, you know, get messages across. And again, of course, some interpretation can help. Well, it's been a pleasure doing this and a unique experience too. As I said before, in all the years I've been doing this, and it's more than you might imagine, I've never had the experience of doing it by video conference. I hope to do it again soon. It's been really great to meet with all of you from all the schools. Very interesting questions. The thought I would like to leave you with is in whatever, whatever your endeavor, whatever you're working on, but especially I can refer to it as, you know, in music and you know, all about practice and all and how hard it is, whatever. Let your passion, let your joy, let your spirit guide you. You know, people ask, how do you motivate a student to practice as a teacher? You know, you can't. The only way I can motivate someone is, is to show my exuberance and my joy in this and hopefully they'll share in that and feel it. If, if you feel that, it won't be hard for you to, you'll go home and you'll have to practice. You'll have to work, you'll have to study. Whatever the topic is, whatever your passion is, that's, that's, that's what I want to leave you with and, and it's been great.